Today we will talk about filtering airborne molecular contamination or AMC. AMC is gas phase contamination, chemicals in the air. AMC filters remove gases that might impact sensitive processes and products or be unhealthy to humans. You may remember Apollo 13, the moon mission that had an explosion en route. The spaceship's oxygen supply was limited, but the lethal challenge was not the lack of oxygen, it was rather the amount of carbon dioxide that built up in the capsule. The solution was to use plastic bags, duct tape, spaceship hoses and limestone from the lunar module to create a makeshift AMC filter and save those lives. You see that it was possible to use common materials to create an advanced AMC filter solution. I am Jürgen Lobert, Director of AMC Technology, and I have been with Entecos for more than 20 years. I have studied gas phase contamination throughout my career, and AMC history fascinates me as much as future opportunities. As we have seen, AMC filters can be made of basic components, but they become advanced products through the combination of the right chemistry and advanced design. AMC filters can remove gas molecules at very low concentrations. We might filter one in every billion gas molecules. To put that number in perspective, imagine hurting the entire world population through a filter portal. Of those 8 billion people, we are trying to filter out one person. That is 0.1 parts per billion, or PPB, a common contamination threshold for AMC. Now, those 8 billion people pass through that filter in a few milliseconds, so whoosh, everybody passed through, and oh, here's Jürgen, we caught him. And if you catch me 9 out of 10 times that the world population passes through that portal, you have a 90% removal efficiency. That's quite a huge achievement. To accomplish this feat, we use special materials called adsorbents, small granules that physically or chemically capture gas molecules. Physical adsorbents use intermolecular electromagnetic forces to capture gases. That is fairly weak and reversible. There are also chemisorbents that remove gases by chemically reacting with them, and that is a very strong bond. And then we can completely destroy gases by using catalysts or ultraviolet light, which is most desirable as it removes the contaminants. Looking at the history, AMC filter history is pretty young. About 200 years ago, firefighters began making primitive masks to prevent smoke inhalation. However, the um, AMC filter history really begins in earnest in the 1910s with the chemical weapons of World War I and its broad suite of toxic gases. The first masks were rather simple, thick fabrics soaked with water, baking soda, and other fluids, but that was improved with a cartridge filter attached to rubber masks that sealed the face with the rubber and then absorbed things like tear gas, mustard gas, or phosgen from the air being breathed in. Jumping forward in the late 1950s, Alvin Barak and William Hall developed the first domestic air purifier. Their design passed air through an electrostatic field and filter and then recirculated the air back into the environment. That was a big advance in chemical filtration. On a grander scale, uh, the U.S. Clean Air Act of 1963 alerted scientists and consumers of the need to protect our lungs from pollutants such as car exhausts and industrial exhausts, building materials, chemicals, pesticides, and allergens, triggering a broad awareness about air pollution. Over the next uh, decades, photolithography, the semiconductor manufacturing process, started to become important, and with it, the removal of EMC to prevent product defects. The most important contaminant in the beginning was ammonia, which distorted circuits on the wafer. Ammonia, unfortunately, is produced in large quantities by the human body, so short of throwing everybody out of the fab, there was no way to preventing that contamination. It needed to be filtered out. That is when Antecos entered the market for chemical filtration. We were the first to popularize pleated chemical filters, where a largely increased surface area needed a much smaller amount of adsorbent to achieve the same performance as loose adsorbent tray filters. Over time, this became a standard filter form factor that is still being used today. 
As computer chips have become smaller and more chemicals were added in the process, a wider variety of contaminants needed to be filtered out, requiring more absorbance and better filter designs. Nowadays, EMC filters are used in all aspects of life. Industrial facilities and data centers use filters to protect products. Hospitals use them to protect the health of their staff and patients. And even higher-end cars now use chemical filters to keep the cabin clean and healthy. Looking back, the development and use of chemical air filtration arguably started about 100 years ago, and Antecos has been part of that for a third of its history. One thing we learned early on is that the best way to implement an EMC filter is to start by measuring the contamination in your environment. At Antecos, we have a laboratory service to determine what contaminants are present and at which concentrations. That lets us classify contaminants into organics, acids, and bases, each of which needs a specific adsorbent. Based on that information, you can now make a tailored AMC filter by mixing different adsorbents for optimized AMC removal. We call that the see it, control it paradigm. You see the contamination by measuring it, and then you control the contamination with a filter solution that has been optimized based on those measurements. It's a very data-driven, scientific approach, and Antecos is the only filter manufacturer doing this. Looking ahead, aside from AMC filters being used more frequently and in more applications, I see three main trends for AMC filtration. The first one is materials improvement. We have come a very long way in material science from using natural materials like simple fabrics or zeolites. These days, Antecos R&D can make advanced adsorbents and tailor them to specific needs. The only limit is really time and cost. The second one is sustainability, which is a strong new driver for industries trying to reduce the environmental impact. And Tecos has its own corporate social responsibility program. And within that framework, we are working on sustainable filter solutions that can be fully incinerated, regenerated, refilled, decomposed, or which are simply designed for a much longer lifespan to minimize the environmental footprint. And the third trend, is customization. 3D printing is a good example for that. You can now print yourself just about any little gadget you want. And instead of buying an off-the-shelf product that satisfies 80% of your needs, you want something that is 100% match, has reasonable cost, still uses advanced materials, and may have less impact on the environment. That trend will likely drive future industrial needs. And Antecos is already doing this because we are providing solutions that are customized for a specific environment. So materials improvement, customization, and all of that done in a sustainable way. That is where I see AMC filter development going.